What's up guys? Today's video I'm going to do something a little bit different. I've come out to the country where my family's old house is. This is where I spent a lot of time growing up and what I want to do is I'm going to build a fishing camp. So this is actually the old house right behind me. However, it is completely stripped bare. I'm not going to show you the interior because uh, the family members that actually have the, the deed ownership on the house would prefer I don't do that. However, take my word for it, there's nothing inside except for the frame and the walls coating the frame. It is absolutely bare. Um, it's just the remnants of a house now. But back there, that's Oyster Creek, and I caught my first carp right over there where I'm pointing. I caught my first gar right there and my first buffalo right there. So what we're going to do, guys, I'm going to build a kind of a bushcraft style fishing camp that I can come hang out in. The reason I would never use the house is because number one, I don't want to film in there. Number two, and maybe this is more important, it is infested with wasps. Uh, it's cold right now, so they're kind of chilled out, but come summertime, you can't get near that thing. So one of the first things that you can see quite clearly is uh, the slope, huge sloping hill behind me. And then coming down again, just watch the, the land rise up, up behind my head as I come down the hill. And then we get down here to the water level. Now in the past, this thing has flooded. Actually, it's the Brazos River, which is about a mile that way. It will flood, flow over its banks, meet the creek, and then the creek just becomes an extension of the river. And that routinely floods this first little plain right here. So I don't want to make anything down here. Very rarely does it ever get above the second one. And then of course, it, on two or three different occasions over the past 20 years, it's actually gotten into the house up there. But I think our shelter, we want to focus on elevating it. I want to use this hill right here. And I want to build a platform that extends off the hill. That is the challenge. So the water rising up here where I am now, that's quite common, but it almost never gets that high. That's only special occasions that that occurs. So that's where I want to focus on the build today. All right, here's some items I was able to locate. Now this, I have no idea if this is even sharp. This ax, I've had this thing for years now. I actually bought it when we were moving stuff out of this house. Uh, there was some deconstruction necessary. So uh, cobalt axe, it's got a fiberglass handle, so it should be relatively tough. Obviously sledgehammer, same story. <clears throat> I bought this about the time we were getting stuff out of the house. This is heavy, this is a 10 pound sledge if I'm not mistaken. And uh, although the exterior is rusted, my god, that thing will do its business. Shovel, I gotta be careful with this thing. This, uh, as you can see, is splintering in multiple places, so this may not last very long. If necessary, I'll use the little hand tool that I use for uh, beach fishing. A little, I don't even know what this is, a hammer and a chisel. I bought this when I was like 12 years old. That's, well, you know, I'm not sponsored by whatever brand this is, but I've had this thing for 17 years, something like that, 18 years. I always track of time. Oh my God, 19 years. Anyway, works very well. I think I wanted to be Indiana Jones, so I was like, I'm gonna buy archeologist tools. I have two very dull saws. So that's that's part of the challenge. Recycled materials. The only things the only things that we get to use that I'm gonna consider luxury items are the tarp that I have in here. There we go. And then maybe, you know, if necessary, I'll use uh, the hand shovel and some of the some of the rope that I have tucked away in some of these bags. Now, before my family owned this property, it was owned by Dow Chemical. And it used to be a bit of a resort. There was, uh, all this was one giant piece of land owned by Dow Chemical. And there was a swimming pool over there where you see that person's boat shed is now. This slab of concrete used to be kind of like a little cabin, like a little uh, a room you could stay in. And there were two more down that way. Uh, but over the years, they became storage sheds for various people, and uh, we were going to have them removed. So we asked for someone to help us because we knew they had the machinery required. And uh, all they ended up doing, and we did not ask for this, they pushed it into a, a ravine here. 
So there's a bunch of junk down here that we're gonna kind of salvage from. Getting it up and down is gonna be a bit of a challenge. But when you see all this stuff, just know, number one, my family didn't put it here. Number two, we do intend to have it removed just as soon as we have the resources necessary. So there's no way to film around it. You're gonna see all that junk right there. We are gonna get that taken out of here. We never asked for it to be put down here in the first place. But uh, today, I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna pick and choose what I want out of here. I'm gonna start over there. If you guys can see, there's a, oh, falling all over the place down here. You guys can see those four by fours right there. Those are long, those are like four by four by tens. That's perfect. And it's, uh, I remember when we bought these things, you know, a lot of this wood we got was uh, treated wood. So it's actually held up to the elements for a long time. So what I think we'll do is take one of these four by fours, stand it up, bury it maybe three or four feet deep, depending on how deep I can dig around all these trees. They're gonna have root systems going in and out of the ground. But uh, try to stand it up right here. So we have two posts. One is the natural tree. One will be the four by four we put in the ground. Run a post atop of it and then slant that tarp like a lean-to coming back this way. And maybe try to use some of this leftover decking as floorboards. Oh, this is going to be a hard one. Sticky clay and a small shovel. So we've gotten to the point now where I can't really use this shovel anymore. Not effectively anyway, so I'm using my hand tool here. I don't have post hole diggers, guys. The whole point of this challenge was to just use the bare minimum of what I had already. You know, I think using the tarp and the shovel and a bit of rope is uh, is pushing it as far as being fair with what I already have. I don't want to use anything else. So buying a pair of post hole diggers was out of the question. And uh, 
I thought we used to have a pair that might be lying around out here, but I was wrong. So what I'm doing is I'm just using the blade of the shovel to carve out the sides of this hole, which is a very thick clay. It's very sticky, thick clay, which is hard to dig into. But at the same time, I know when I put that post in here, it's going to hold fairly well without concrete. Nope, nope, nope.
use some of this uh, washing machine cable that I found as cordage. I'm gonna try to straighten up this tarp a little bit. You see we get a nice little platform, it's elevated the way that I wanted it to be. We can build onto that as time goes on if I wanna spend more and more time cutting boards, filling that out. But first I wanna tighten this thing up and I'm gonna pull this apart, use it as rope. Good thing about this, sometimes, yeah, look at this. The good thing about this is that uh, because it's wire, you can see that uh, it's gonna hold its shape fairly well. Even though it's springing back a little bit, the tension in that wire is gonna hold shape as I wrap it around itself and knot it up. It's become very difficult for that to untie naturally. Well guys, I know it's a, a piece of work, but I think that is gonna be the first first leg of it. I mean, it's kinda just as uh, makeshift as you can possibly get, but uh, I mean, it'll work. And I feel like we played fair. We used uh, just a little bit of stuff we brought with us, like the tarp, and just a tiny bit of rope, just a bit of rope that's up there, and the hand shovel. Everything else I found out here so these boards, uh, been out here for 10 plus years. You know, I cut these out to make a frame. If I wanna build onto that, there are more of those boards. I'm just, I'm too exhausted and it's getting too late in the day to keep trying to cut more of them. Uh, this is a good stopping point. But if I want, I can keep building out that way. Those supports are incredibly strong. I jumped up and down on them with all of my weight and they, uh, they held up. Some man-made material here that I found, some wire from an old washer machine, using that as, uh, as a bit of cordage. But also, going real old school, I found uh, some really flexible tree roots, and we kind of lashed down the boards so that they hold their place. You see, I can push up on that, and that's holding its spot really well. That right there is super temporary, holding the tarp in place there. I probably need to put something to cushion the, the stick on the end there that way it's not gonna eventually tear through these are pretty pretty inexpensive tarps these uh square stitch kinds but hey you know this works pretty well all things considered it could sit out of the rain quite nicely in here I can roll this up if I want to I might do that later and I have a nice little platform to sit on I am very far from being one of these uh, bushcraft experts that you see on so many channels. I'm not Mike Pollan. I'm not claiming to be Mike Pollan. Uh, but this is just a bit of fun. This is something we're gonna come out here and use a little bit more often. Fishing in the creek, uh, and then for the, uh, the other channel that we have, Wildlife's Outdoor Cooking. If you haven't already, head over there, subscribe to that channel. I'll put the link in the description of this video. We'll do a lot of our outdoor cooking stuff right here. <laughs> well, I reckon that'll just about do it for us today, guys. Every time I start filming, that little donkey over there starts going off. Very small makeshift shelter from natural and man-made materials. I would say 90% of the materials that went into that shelter uh, we found on location. Uh, very few things that we actually brought with us. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. When you do subscribe, make sure you hit that little bell down there in the bottom right corner. That way when I upload a video, you get notifications straight away. If you want to help support the channel even further, See the link to our Patreon page down in the description. See the list of all the great stuff you'd get in return for becoming a patron of the channel. Again, make sure that you head over to our other channel, Wildlife's Outdoor Cooking. Make sure you subscribe to that too. More is coming, guys. Stay tuned, and until it's here, I will see you guys later.